Good day to you all. In today's discussion, we delve into a particularly prevalent yet significant medical scenario. We focus on the case of a 60-year-old woman, a patient who has been battling type 2 diabetes for the past decade, a common chronic condition affecting millions worldwide. Over the past month, this patient has started to experience a new symptom, namely a persistent tingling sensation and numbness in her feet. This development has understandably caused concern, leading her to seek medical advice. These symptoms might appear relatively benign to some. However, in the context of long-standing diabetes, such symptoms could potentially indicate a more serious underlying condition. It's this intersection of common chronic disease and new developing symptoms where the art of medical investigation comes into play, and where we, as healthcare professionals, need to apply our knowledge and expertise to diagnose and manage effectively. Join me as we delve deeper into this case, unraveling the symptomatology, investigations, and management strategies, along with the implications of the same. Our goal is to enhance our understanding, learn from each other, and ultimately improve the care we provide to our patients. Let's get started. As we dive into the patient's history, it's crucial to acknowledge that this woman has been living with type 2 diabetes for a significant amount of time, 10 years to be exact. The long-term nature of her diabetes management signifies the chronic nature of the disease, requiring diligent care and monitoring over an extended period. However, a recent change in her clinical picture has led her to consult us. Over the past month, she has been experiencing numbness and a tingling sensation in her feet, a phenomenon known as paresthesia. Paresthesia, especially in patients with long-standing diabetes, is not to be taken lightly. The persistence of these symptoms for a whole month is a significant detail. It's crucial to understand that any change or development in a patient's symptomatology, particularly in the setting of chronic conditions like diabetes, can be indicative of complications and thus warrants further investigation. At this juncture, it is essential to consider all aspects of her medical, social, and family history. Has her diabetes management been optimal? Are there any lifestyle factors that could contribute to her symptoms? Any similar issues in the family? Detailed inquiries can provide essential clues in comprehending the full picture of her health status and guiding the next steps in our clinical approach. In light of the patient's symptoms, we opted for a focused physical examination, specifically a neurological examination of her lower extremities. This examination is integral in patients who report numbness or tingling, as these symptoms often suggest a neurological basis. During the examination, our patient reported a reduced sensation in her feet. This diminished sensitivity was more pronounced in the soles of her feet. It's essential to note that the feet, particularly the soles, contain a high density of nerve endings, making them highly susceptible to changes in neurological conditions. Furthermore, upon checking the reflexes in her lower extremities, we observed a slight reduction. A decline in reflex responses, though subtle in this case, can often indicate potential issues in nerve function. Reflexes are an integral part of the body's neurological framework, and any alterations to their normal functioning can be indicative of underlying neurological disorders. In conclusion, the examination findings of reduced sensation and slightly diminished reflexes in the patient's lower extremities are significant. Together with the patient's reported symptoms, these observations underscore the necessity for further investigations to determine the cause and formulate a management plan. Given the patient's symptoms, medical history, and our physical examination findings, we opted to conduct several diagnostic investigations to gain further insight into her condition. First, we ordered a nerve conduction study, a specific type of neurodiagnostic test designed to measure the speed at which an electrical impulse moves through a nerve. The presence of tingling and numbness, coupled with the physical examination findings, suggested a potential problem with nerve function in the patient's feet. The nerve conduction study was thus a crucial step to establish the presence of any form of neuropathy, and in this case, potentially, diabetic neuropathy. Simultaneously, we also carried out various blood tests. These included a complete blood count to provide a broad overview of the patient's general health. A renal function test was also conducted, as diabetic patients are at risk for kidney complications, which can often coexist with neurological complications. 
Lastly, and critically, we assessed the patient's HbA1c levels. The HbA1c test provides an average of the patient's blood glucose levels over the past 2-3 months, serving as an indicator of how well her diabetes has been controlled over this period. Uncontrolled or poorly controlled diabetes is a common cause of neuropathy, making this test integral to our diagnostic investigation. Together, these investigations aim to provide us with a comprehensive understanding of the patient's current health status, control over diabetes, and potential reasons for the numbness and tingling in her feet. Our process of clinical reasoning in this case began with an evaluation of the patient's primary complaint, paresthesia in her feet, or a tingling and numb sensation, which had persisted for about a month. This symptom, in conjunction with her known long-standing history of type 2 diabetes, provided an initial hypothesis. Diabetes is a systemic disease with the potential to impact various organ systems within the body. Chronic hyperglycemia, or elevated blood sugar levels, can cause multiple complications, and peripheral neuropathy is one of the most common. Diabetic peripheral neuropathy is a form of nerve damage caused by diabetes. It can lead to numbness or pain in your feet and legs and, less commonly, in your hands and arms. The sensation of pins and needles, numbness, and tingling that our patient reported are hallmark symptoms of this condition, and they often start in the feet before affecting other areas. Considering these factors, our primary clinical reasoning directed us towards the likelihood of diabetic neuropathy as the most probable explanation for her symptoms. However, it was essential to rule out other potential causes, including other forms of peripheral neuropathy unrelated to diabetes, vitamin B12 deficiency, and others. This formed the basis for our ordered investigations, which included the nerve conduction study and blood tests. In conclusion, her medical history, her presenting complaint, and our physical examination guided our clinical reasoning process, leading us towards the tentative diagnosis of diabetic neuropathy, pending further investigations for confirmation and to rule out other potential causes. The results of our investigations shed light on the situation. The nerve conduction study supported our clinical suspicion of diabetic neuropathy. Her HbA1c levels, an indicator of average blood sugar over the past three months, were above the recommended range. This finding suggested that despite her efforts, her blood sugar levels had not been optimally controlled, contributing to the onset of her neuropathy symptoms. Given these findings, we proceeded with a two-pronged approach to her management. Firstly, we focused on better glycemic control. This involved a thorough review and adjustment of her current diabetes management regimen. We made necessary changes to her oral anti-diabetic medication and emphasized the importance of a balanced diet, regular exercise, and monitoring of blood sugar levels. This step was crucial, as optimal control of her blood sugar levels would help slow the progression of her neuropathy and potentially prevent the onset of other diabetes-related complications. Secondly, we initiated a treatment specifically for her neuropathy symptoms. We prescribed a medication that is commonly used to alleviate the tingling and numbness associated with neuropathy. This medication works by modifying the way the nerves transmit signals, thereby reducing the unpleasant sensations she was experiencing. Finally, we emphasized the importance of regular foot care. This included daily inspection of her feet for any sores or cuts, regular moisturization to prevent dry and cracked skin, and wearing well-fitted, comfortable shoes. This is crucial as diminished sensation in her feet increases her risk of injuries, which she might not notice due to her neuropathy, potentially leading to serious complications such as ulcers and infections. The outcome of these interventions was positive. Over the course of several weeks, she reported a gradual improvement in her symptoms. This case exemplifies the benefits of comprehensive and targeted management in chronic conditions like diabetes. Reflecting on this case allows us to draw some crucial learning points. The patient's case is a common scenario encountered in clinical practice, reflecting the challenges we face in managing long-term conditions like diabetes. Diabetes, as we all know, is a chronic disease that requires diligent management and regular follow-ups to maintain optimal control of blood sugar levels and prevent complications. This patient, despite managing her diabetes for a decade, experienced the onset of neuropathy symptoms. 
This development reinforces the importance of optimal glycemic control in the long-term management of diabetes. Even with the best efforts, patients may still experience complications, highlighting the relentless nature of this disease and the need for continuous monitoring and modification of the management approach. Furthermore, the onset of her neuropathy symptoms was only noticed when she started experiencing paresthesia. This brings to the fore the significance of a thorough history taking and clinical examination. Often, patients might disregard or fail to report such minor symptoms during consultations. As clinicians, it is essential for us to probe deeper into their experiences and carry out a meticulous examination, particularly in patients with chronic conditions known to have insidious complications. The early detection of her neuropathy and prompt initiation of the appropriate management plan underscores the importance of proactive health care. By recognizing the potential complication early, we were able to intervene promptly and prevent further deterioration, emphasizing the value of early detection in the management of chronic diseases. In essence, this case serves as a reminder of the complex and continuous care necessary in managing chronic conditions like diabetes and the vital role we as healthcare professionals play in this process. In the context of evidence-based medicine, our management strategy for this patient perfectly aligns with the guidelines provided by the American Diabetes Association, ADA. The ADA recommendations strongly emphasize the importance of maintaining optimal glycemic control as a primary strategy in the management and prevention of diabetic neuropathy. Our decision to revise the patient's diabetes regimen was thus informed by these guidelines, underlining the crucial role of effective blood sugar control in slowing the progression of diabetic neuropathy. Additionally, the patient was prescribed a medication to manage her neuropathy symptoms. This decision aligns with the ADA recommendations which advocate the use of medications like pregabalin or gabapentin for the symptomatic treatment of diabetic peripheral neuropathy. These medications are effective in relieving symptoms of neuropathy such as the tingling and numbness our patient was experiencing. We also emphasized the importance of regular foot care to the patient. Diabetic neuropathy can often lead to a loss of sensation in the feet increasing the risk of unnoticed injuries and infections. The ADA guidelines stress foot care as an essential part of managing diabetic neuropathy and preventing complications such as foot ulcers and infections. In conclusion, the decisions made in the management of this patient's case were deeply rooted in evidence-based guidelines. These decisions serve to provide the best possible patient outcomes, informed by a combination of clinical experience and current research evidence. As we conclude our discussion, we are reminded once again of the common and potentially severe complications that can arise from chronic diseases such as diabetes. The case of our patient, who experienced diabetic neuropathy, is a stark illustration of this reality. The condition presented as a tingling and numbness in the feet symptoms that might be dismissed as minor inconveniences by patients. However, this underlines the crucial need for patient education. With better understanding of their conditions, patients can be more proactive in seeking medical help when new symptoms arise, potentially preventing further complications. This case has also underscored the significance of rigorous follow-up in the management of chronic conditions like diabetes. Regular follow-ups allow for early detection of complications and timely adjustments in the management plan, leading to better patient outcomes. Moving forward, our action plan involves an even stronger emphasis on patient education and meticulous follow-up schedules. For clinicians, continuous learning and staying updated with the latest research and guidelines in the management of diabetes and its complications is paramount. In the grand scheme of things, this case reiterates the profound impact of the principles of thorough assessment, patient-centered care, and evidence-based practice on the health outcomes of our patients. Thank you for joining us in this case-based discussion today. We hope it has provided valuable insights that will enhance your clinical practice and the care you provide for your patients. Remember, each patient interaction offers a unique learning experience that helps us grow as healthcare providers. Let's continue to learn, improve, and strive for excellence in patient care.